To take a look at the anti-corruption fight and today's development, I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by a former Director General of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, Professor Epiphany Azinge. He joins me from Abuja. Thanks for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you very much. All right. Now, for about seven days, the ownership of, if you can just look straight ahead and then look at me. That's it. Fantastic. Thank you. For about seven days now, talking about the 13 billion Naira, we've been talking about ownership of the money. We saw the NIA come out and claim ownership. Now this investigation. Do you think that puts to rest the ownership, I mean, in terms of who owns the money at least? I'm afraid not that uh, that will put an end to the claim. And that is basically why the investigation is on, because the same investigation panel will now determine the ownership of that particular amount of money. And it is not enough for one to lay claim to ownership. One must do so, showing title or particular claims that will obviously make sure that the ownership is truly his or theirs, as the case may be. So I think it is too premature in the day for us to start thinking that because a particular agency laid claim to the ownership of the money, it's enough for us to adjudge that they truly own the money. So we are with the whole investigation of the three-man panel, and their report will now determine truly where the ownership lies. All right, let's just look at what that three-man panel is, is, uh, is supposed to be investigating in terms of the strength of what they're supposed to do. And um, it says here um, that the investigation is to look into the circumstances in which the NIA came into the possession of those funds, how and by whose or which authority the funds were made available to the NIA. Is this the sort of strength of directive that you're expecting? Well, much more than that, because we may also think that being an agency of government, uh, funds for that particular agency are ideally budgeted and appropriated by the National Assembly and by the presidency. So we want to know whether it is in 2016 or 2015 or 2017 the money was appropriated and budgeted for. We want to ask more questions. Why should that money not be in the bank? And for what reason should, be, should it be in the private uh, confines of an environment or private property, as the case may be? There are so many underlying questions that we need to ask, and I'm sure that some of these will unravel when the three-man panel will start their work. So it is important that some of these questions are answered and answered creditably. All right, let's look at today's suspensions. And for many months now, we've seen the calls for something to happen, at least where the SGF is concerned. The presidency have come out, and this has been done now. Um, what do you think that says about the anti-corruption fight, or how do you view what has happened now in terms of um, how the anti-corruption fight is going in your perspective? My, for me, I consider it to be the loudest statement coming from the presidency at this point in time. And it is indicative of the fact that there is a fresh bite to the anti-corruption fight. And I, I want to say that it, it sends a lot of signals to many people in this country. One, that the president is bold, courageous, and decisive enough to take this action at this point in time, especially as it affects people who are very, very close to him in government. And being members of the executive, as the case may be, is an indication that we have obviously woken up from a slumber and we're prepared to give fresh bite to the fight. Secondly, that people in government should also, especially the executive arm of government, should have it at the back of their mind. That it's no longer business as usual, that there are no secret cows and nobody's above board. And that is the, the marker that the president seemed to have thrown down today. And many people will hit it. It will serve as a deterrent to people in government to know that, well, the fact that we belong to a particular political persuasion or political divide is not an excuse for us. Certainly the signal is that the whole fight is not politicized, so it is not weighed against a, a, the opposition parties that anybody, regardless of your political persuasion, can be obviously found out and dealt with decisively as far as the anti-corruption fight is concerned. All right, thank you. Former Director General of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, thanks for sharing your thoughts with us on the news at 10 tonight, Professor.